Huh, those cauldrons look like Octronics for some reason. Ah well, not gonna worry about that, cause we're in the Temple of Droplets, and uh... Yeah, not fond of this dungeon at all. And look, Ezlo, you're actually holding me up by repeatedly telling me to hurry up. So we actually have a boss door right away, so at least this dungeon will be fast, right? <laughs> don't don't look at the timer that says 35 minutes, please don't. Oh boy, but where to start with this dungeon? Uh, well, this isn't actually so bad. Uh, the entire room is trying to kill us at this point. Including those those little uh, lanterns there. Also the pots, but they didn't do anything to me because I killed them first. Alright, so I guess I could point out the fact that in the beginning room there were those uh, ice blocks that we pushed. Well, one of the central gimmicks of this dungeon is a block pushing puzzle. Yes, quite of this dungeon is based around block pushing puzzles. You know, that thing that most people don't like. I don't know why you're saying that, Ezlo, because we're pretty far away from the sunlight. Ah well. So this first puzzle is of course pretty easy, because it's just getting you used to the fact that there are... <sighs> yeah, I noticed there was a key, that's why I came down here. Yeah, I'm gonna push that block and I'm gonna push it into the sunlight, the puzzle's pretty obvious. It's just here to get you used to it. And we get a small key. Alright, so, pretty linear so far, you know, we got the key and we've only seen one locked door other than the boss door. So, continuing on... Uh, I suppose now I should, uh... Probably mention the aesthetics. They're kinda dull. Like, ice dungeons can be pretty... Um... Good looking. Certainly I wasn't going to say cool, certainly, certainly not, not not at all, but this one just looks kinda dull. Although actually, uh, opposite of dull, while it, it is kind of a weird decision to base a dungeon off, well, not entirely off, but mostly off of sliding block puzzles, I do think this idea is kinda neat, or this might actually be the wrong room, but um, there's the boss key right here. Of course, getting it's not going to be so easy, because another part of this dungeon is making block puzzles work by sliding other blocks. And these aren't exactly the easiest puzzles, because I don't know if it's just me, but I find it really hard to visualize something when not everything's in place. Like, the fact that I have to set things up myself, I really don't care for it, and... I was especially bad at this when I was a kid. Not as much so now, I'm at least a little better at it, but I still have a bit of a hard time. But anyway, now we actually have to close the sunlight door, because otherwise we can't get back to the top floor. Because if you see right here, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to make it over that hole. So yeah, that's kind of a neat puzzle. I think we'll be seeing a slightly better version. Well, actually it's not even that good now that I think about it. I'm trying to compliment this dungeon, but it's not letting me because I'm just thinking, oh, that's a cool section. Ah, actually, uh, no, it wasn't that interesting. But at least the short dungeon's already over. So, let's take on the boss. Oh, of course, we have to get the, whoa, the elements. Sure is. Do we have to fight the ice? That does present a problem. Well, if you're saying melt it off, so far we've melted things with sunlight, so I think you know where this is gonna go. But that is a rather large chunk of ice. We're gonna need a lot of sunlight to melt that. Oh, look, that Octrock's frozen. So thankfully we don't have to worry about it. I guess there's no boss here. Not like it could possibly be that giant Octrock or anything. Alright, so I think it's going to lay off the sliding block puzzles for a little bit, and thank goodness there's no like like down there, because if there was, that would be kind of cheap. Hey, look, here's a like like, or rupee like, I suppose, that you can't actually see. That would be bad game design, so of course that's not the case, but still, sometimes you just think, wow, wouldn't it suck if they did this, even though they definitely wouldn't. 
So, uh, let's see. Try and... So, yeah, we're continuing on, and honestly... Aesthetics? Still not all that interesting. I mean, it would have been kind of neat if we started out as, you know, just kind of a normal-looking cave, except purple, but... You know, it would have been cool if it transitioned into a more ice theme. Like, if this area was mostly made out of ice and melting ice, that would be pretty cool. I should stop using the word cool for this dungeon. And in general, it's kind of a vague word, but either way... Yeah, honestly... It's just a boring-looking dungeon. I'm trying to think of something that looks good around here, but nothing's coming to mind. And they just out and out give you uh, mostly the answer to a hint. Because uh, coming up, we have a bunch of blocks that look like a vase, so... If we dive over here... There's Guy, and wow! Doylon's Jesus all of a sudden, and now he's not. But we can't actually make it through here because, well, we can't just get back to land, so we're going to need something to stand on top of. So, I guess it's back up to the top of the waterfall for me. So, this is a boring-looking dungeon. I can't remember anything that looks all that interesting here. Maybe I'll be proven wrong later. I hope I'm proven wrong. I mean, the floors were kind of cool, you know, those frozen floors with flowers in them? That was neat. Yeah. I know I'm reaching, okay? As for the music, this is actually a really good song. Like, it's very creepy, you know, it's got a good atmosphere. But at the same time... Eh, remember this dungeon's 35 minutes? I mean, certainly we won't be fighting a boss, but for some reason or another, we're not going to be listening to it for all 35 minutes, but certainly not due to boss, of course not. <laughs> that would just be silly. But yeah, we're going to be listening to it for quite a while, and honestly, I know it's a fitting song, but kind of sucks listening to such a drab song for half an hour, because really it does stop being eerie after a while, and it just starts getting boring, and, uh... really can't say I appreciate it all that much in that case. If it were a short dungeon, I'd like it, but... Yeah, in this case, eh, not really. Oh yeah, and by the way, the lily pad's back. I've been talking about the, uh, aesthetics for so long, I forgot to mention this. This is a puzzle we haven't seen... Actually, we, we haven't seen it inside a dungeon in a while. Outside of a dungeon is a different case. We will, of course, need to take it a bit further. We're not just going to abandon our lily pad right here, but... It is kind of nice that they're giving the gust jar some use, but... Part of me says that I wish they could have come up with more uses for it, but... At the same time... Uh, it is Game Boy Advance game. I shouldn't expect a huge variety of puzzles. Also, we've got the mini-boss here. Uh, despite the fact that we got the gust jar from him... The Gust Jar doesn't really make him any easier, which is a shame, because, you know, from time to time you see that sort of uh, boss or mini-boss that gets a bit easier with the item you obtain after it. Not in this case, though. Though, to be fair, thanks to this new sword, he'll only go down in two cycles, which... Hey, it speeds something up, so that's nice. And in this room, of course, we get the compass. You didn't think we'd be getting the dungeon item from this, did ya? Why would we just walk into this random-ass room that we got to from the mini-boss that we've already seen and expect to get something new? I mean, really. Oh, no, I think we're approaching something. Oh, no, I know this room. Oh, God, I know this room so very well. Uh, welcome to my least favorite room in the game, and pretty much the number one reason why I hate this dungeon. With the burning passion, which you see is fitting because this is the ice dungeon, so it's a bit of a reversal. Because you'd think my passion wouldn't be fire since it's cold and oh god damn it! Hey, what do you know? We're we're in the shitty dungeon, and we got. Uh, some sort of dung dropped on us. I, I don't know where they got it or whose it is, but I'd rather stop thinking about it because it's unpleasant. 
So remember earlier when I said it's really hard to visualize block pushing puzzles when you have to push blocks into place? This puzzle confused the hell out of me when I was a kid. It took me so many repeated attempts to, to just tackle this one. And honestly, looking at it, it's, it's kind of easy to see what you're supposed to do. It's just because all these blocks can be pushed that I could never really find the answer. Thankfully, in this recording, it only took me like two attempts to actually get this right, because honestly, I am exaggerating it a little bit. It is a pretty easy puzzle, but still, I can't help being bitter about it, you know? Because it's a puzzle that just stuck me every time. Like, I played Minish Cap a fair few times when I was a kid, so... Of course, I ran across this dungeon a fair few times. So, of course, I got the joy of being annoyed by this damn puzzle. For quite a few times as a child. But it's over now, it was easy enough. And I don't think there's anything too terribly important over there. Yeah, though... I think that those jars might have some hearts in them. I mean, I might as well check while we're here. No, they had six rupees. Well, that was useless. Alright. Basically, we're just going to explore this area, because, uh... Wow. Well. Now, now that I think about it, this is kind of annoying. Like, the lily pad puzzle was kind of neat the first time, but... We didn't really have to explore areas like this. And here we do. Just have to maneuver our way through here, on a lily pad, by rep repeatedly pressing the B button. Come on, Ezlo, don't exaggerate. You can see me, at least. So yeah, here's a dark room. We've seen a few of these, but this one's actually pretty tricky, because there are holes here, but the path is easy to follow, so... Hey, nothing too much to worry about. Though you do want to be careful when you're in a dark room, because you don't want to go tumbling off to your death. Well, into a pit, really. Unless you're low on health, it's not gonna kill you. Oh, mini-boss time. And we have more Scissors Beetle! I do love the names for these guys. Though three of them in a small room does actually make them a bit difficult to deal with. Especially if they keep attacking at the same time like this, because it's kinda hard to uh, maneuver yourself around and hit them. Though of course I killed one quickly enough, so... That'll make it easier, and once we take care of this guy, it'll get even easier. One guy on his own. Not bad at all. I have defeated the enemy's stand, and all I got was this lousy warp point. I mean, at least it's something. This is a pretty long dungeon, and we are pretty far through it. But, on the bright side... Oh yeah, that was actually a pun, because... See that lever? It is a very heavy lever, so we do need two of us in order to actually push this thing. But, when we do push it... It gets just a little brighter. How does that not melt the ice? Seriously, look at that. The element is clearly in the sunlight. We should be able to obtain it. Hey, we really shouldn't have to melt both sides of it. That's just being... Like, this ice is being picky. I know, ice is an inanimate object, but you know what? It is being picky. You know, it, it's being very pedantic. It wants both sides of it covered, when really that should not matter at all. Oh well. As we move forward, there are at least a few less sliding block puzzles. But, of course, it's not like the dungeon's gonna be getting any better. And no, a free kinstone piece will not make me feel better. Unless it's a green kinstone piece, that'll be useful. Or maybe, say, the Tingle Brothers side quest. That would be nice. I'd like that. But I don't think I'll be getting that. Oh, look, and blade traps. Well, those are pretty difficult to deal with with ice, but if I remember correctly, there's a pretty good gap between them to fit through. Like, yeah, an entire segment. Well, no, that's only a few of them missing, but... I've got it down. Not bad at all, and I'm not wasting my time going after those vases from there, especially since I can just do this, and 
I don't get anything from it anyway. What about you? What do you got for me? Oh, okay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I was just saying I needed a green kinstone piece. I wonder if that one will actually be useful. I hope it is. Okay, so if I remember correctly, yeah, this is the puzzle that I thought was pretty cool, but honestly is a little more tedious than anything else. Because you have to go all the way down here, push this lever to close the area at the top, so that we can push the other lever to open the area at the top, so we can go back down to push the lever again, so that sunlight will actually reach the bottom area for that one chest, which we already know is for a key. What else could it be? We saw the locked door. There's nowhere else in the dungeon to go. We know exactly what this is. Why delay this? Yeah, it's not exactly my idea of a good puzzle. As it's been for the last, what, 12 minutes? I mean, I kind of just decided that I don't like this puzzle after previously thinking that I did, but really isn't a good puzzle. Ah well, at least we don't have to close it again in order to get across or anything. That would make it more tedious, and trust me, it's already tedious as it is. Also, I'd just like to point out that the graphic doesn't actually show, uh, oh, that it doesn't actually show the area closed below it. Anyway, gee, I wonder if we'll be getting a mini-boss. Uh-oh, that looks familiar. So, our new mini-boss for today is going to be the Giant Blue Chew. It's fought in pretty much the same way as the Giant Green Chew, except this guy's electrified. And when he's electrified, you can't actually remove his bottom portion. That still sounds mildly wrong. Also, as you might have noticed, this guy likes to jump a lot more than Green Chew did. So yeah, I guess it's a decent mini-boss. Wow. I can't really say anything good about the Temple of Droplets, can I? I mean, it's just been reusing stuff. I know this guy's a new sprite, he does do new stuff. But it's still the giant chew battle. I mean, it would have been a pretty good idea if there was some way to actually, uh, that you had to remove his electricity yourself, like if there was another item you could do that with. But no, it's just a waiting game this time. So it's the giant green chew battle, only you have to wait for it more than you did before. It's actually pretty good before because he was moving towards you, so you could begin attacking him pretty much immediately, but you did have to be wary of where he was so that, you know, you didn't get hit by him. And this guy, he's just jumping around a lot and he's electrified, so you can't hit him for arbitrary reasons. Okay, they're not that arbitrary, but nonetheless, they make the battle worse. Didn't I enter this battle liking it? <laughs> God damn it, Temple of Droplets. I'm trying here. I'm trying to say something good, but I can't. Well, actually, I can say something good. We get the lantern. So, the nice thing about the flame lantern is there's no magic meter in this game, so we can freely just light this thing up anytime we want, and it's multi use. You can melt ice with it, which is going to be very useful. We've seen some ice we need to melt before. Again, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to go back to that area of the uh, Hyrule Town sewers or wherever those were for that item. I could be wrong, but I don't remember doing that just because it's out of the way. But, not only does it melt ice, it can also light torches, and in dark rooms, you'll be able to see a lot more. Oh boy, more scissors, Beetle. Okay, this battle's kind of annoying. I mean... It doesn't feel like the gimmick here really matters. I mean, it's nice to be able to have the flame lantern and all to see, but... We did this battle before, it's just... Now there are things in the way, but those things in the way can help light up the room, but eventually they will be snuffed out for some mysterious reason. I, I guess there's a passing breeze through here that goes off like every set amount of time. But yeah, that was just kind of annoying more than anything. And just because I'm weird about this, I light all the lanterns. 
And see, they go out immediately, so there's no point. They will not, however, go out immediately here, because you do actually have to light the lanterns. Because when you do that, the blocks just vanish. I mean, it's not like we could push that one out of the way, because it would just go to a corner, so... Even if we could push it, it wouldn't help us. We've got to deal with these blue guys. And they're fairly annoying. Even with our wider range of sights, they can still kind of sneak up on you. Not the pesto guys, though. Not the uh, pesto flies. I forget what they're called, but... Yeah, they are so slow-moving that it doesn't really matter anyway. So even though it is dark, they're not surprising me. Now, if the lantern were off, they couldn't be a threat, but we've never really had to deal with them like that. Ah well, take these guys out. Damn it. Of course, the confined space is probably what's hurting me more than the, uh, limited vision. Oh, and look at that, bombable wall. They're not even trying to hide this one. This could actually be a pretty de- oops. Uh, this could be a pretty decent wall that's not indicated by, like, uh crumbling wall can just be a normal looking wall because honestly it's a distinct enough area where you're kind of just thinking oh hey there's probably something to bomb over there I mean I came all this way and this is a little uh, open area it opens up to the wall and indeed it can't be bombed but now they just make it obvious you just might pass it by if you don't see it thanks to your limited vision and we get a key for this so you do have to come here that's probably why they went with the decision to not hide the wall. I mean, they don't want to make this too difficult. Well, not really difficult. I don't want to say tedious, either. I mean, I guess something being easy to miss can be kind of bad uh, design. Not something overly offensive, but, you know, I, I can just see why they did it like that. It probably was a good idea. Of course, what's not a good idea is a maze like this, where you have to light the lanterns in order to open the passage. I mean, if you had to light lanterns in order to find your way, that would be a pretty cool... Well, it would be an okay idea. A better idea than this, at least. But at least we're almost at the end of this. In fact, we actually are. Because we just got one more torch to lights. And of course, we already have the key. So, let's see, moving on, what do we have next? I can't remember, because this is a long dungeon. Oh boy, those fire enemies. Fire chains suck because they light you on fire, and if I haven't shown it off before, when Doylon is lit on fire, his butt's on fire, and he just runs around constantly. I feel like I've mentioned that before, but I, I think I should remind you that... Yeah, he, he can be set on fire, and he will be... Con com he will be completely uncontrollable if that happens, so prevent that from happening, because otherwise you're in for a world of hurts. And actually, if I remember correctly, that same effect does occur in Four Swords. And if I remember correctly, that's also one of the reasons why I've never actually 100%ed that game. Because it is on DSi. The problem is, there are optional dungeons in that. Uh, I forget the exact ones, but there are certain ones that just end with these huge enemy gauntlets. And I was actually able to beat one of those enemy stages. But, unfortunately, in the end, I think it was the second or third one in which there were fire whiz robes. And they just kept lighting me on fire. And the thing is, there's actually a pit around the room. So, yeah got set on fire, ran off the cliff, and of course, that was a pretty quick way to kill me. And you can revive in that- oh, whoops. Yeah, you can light these blocks on fire, and I believe that's what you do want to- d okay, you want to do that for one, but you do need one of them for the switch. And of course, I'm sure you know what to do with the other ones. But yeah, I was never able to beat that section, because while you can revive with rupees, it didn't matter, I was just dying that much. And that's why I've never completed Four Swords, which kind of sucks because I went to, I went through so much work to actually try and 100% it on my own, which, let me tell you, is really annoying because there are certain areas you can't access unless you get a certain amount of rupees, and without rupee fever, which is a thing that only happens in multiplayer, you actually have to grind 
to get to certain areas. Because, like, uh, I think it's even remakes of areas, because you get to the end of an area with a certain amount of rupees, and the Great Fairy is like, oh, I'll give you this key so you can do this area over again. Or maybe it was a... I forget what everything it does. It's been a while since I played that game. I haven't really felt like doing so. Anyway, lots of block pushing still. I mean, now it's block pushing with two doylons, and now it's block pushing, but you can't see the entire area. But honestly, it's still not a huge thing. I mean, I guess having the area covered makes these blue ladybug guys more annoying to deal with, but why would you want that? Because they're already pretty bad as it is. Oh, in this room, you have to light all the torches in a certain amount of time, so... You have to not really care about the ice, and I am sucking at the segment so hard, but nonetheless I must persevere, because despite the ice physics, you have to light all these lanterns, and somehow, despite my miserable performance, I was actually able to do that in time. Even though those lanterns really should have started going out. And honestly, if they do start going out, it's really hard to get them uh, back in the uh, proper position, because you'll go back to light one, and then another will go out, and then another, and another, so... Yeah, you're better off starting again if they start going out, because otherwise you're just playing a game of catch-up, which you're probably not going to win. And that's catch-up, not catch-up. Alright, Scissors Beetle taken care of, and they weren't important anyway. They were just normal enemies in the middle of a dungeon, and gee, I wonder what I have to do here. Whatever could- oh jeez, I am somehow low on health. Oh jeez, I am- oh my god, I am- I'm not crap. Please, please do not pick me up like I am. And please do not pick up that vase, I do not appreciate any of this. Okay, you're actually pesto bugs, and oh my god, I'm almost dead. How did I let a performance like this slide? Seriously, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Okay, that's taken care of. Oh dear, and I apologize. I really should have restarted this run, but for some reason I didn't. And now we have to deal with annoying bleeping now. That was redundant, because I said now twice. And oh boy, now we get to fight this exciting mini-boss, but now there are two of them. In a dark room. At least he can get rid of these webs easily enough, so... While they might be a problem because they'll bounce you back, you, you can burn them fairly easily. And as I said before, these guys just take two cycles, so... As long as you play it safe and these guys comply, you should be well on your way to killing these guys quickly. Not a problem at all. And neither is that bleeping. That's not a problem anymore. Thank goodness for that, because no one likes the bleeping. Alright, I think we're actually almost done with the dungeon proper. I'll kill these guys first. And thankfully you can't actually fall off this walkway. Oh my goodness. I mean, first off, that would make the previous section more annoying, because it would kind of look like it was... Oh, god damn it. Because it would kind of look like a place you could walk on from below. And second off, it would be so annoying if they just let you fall off when there are ice physics present. Ugh. So, Temple of Droplets. Not a good dungeon, but not as bad as it could have been. You know, if Capcom wasn't smart about designing this game, it could have been a really bad dungeon instead of just a bad dungeon. And thank goodness we don't have to hear the bleeping as we get the elements. And nothing else will happen. Yep, nothing at all. See, the element melts out, and that giant Octorok is A-OK. -okay. Well, I suppose it's a normal size Octorok, really, we're just tiny. But nonetheless, we got the element, and the only thing we had to trouble ourselves with was, well, half an hour of dungeon. Oh no, the Octorok was actually melted. It was just a delayed melt, and oh, come on, why is that your first reaction? Ay -ay -ay. Could anyone make this easy for once? 
don't worry about me for a moment. I need to take some time to replenish my hearts, because I am not fighting that boss at low health. Because I'll be honest, this is probably one of the toughest bosses in the game. At the very least, I have trouble with it, so that counts for something. Right? Right? No? Okay. Well, I can have one heart missing. So now it's time with the Plants Butted Octorok. And that's B-U-T-T-E-D, not B-U-D-E-D, -E or Does Butted have one or two Ds? Oh, whatever. Anyway, starts the battle by shooting rocks as it wants to do. So reflect them back. I think you can reflect them with your shield, but the sword works A-OK. -okay. Do be wary of when it launches out spikes. And now our goal is to burn that plant, while also not being sucked up by the Octrock. Because if it sucks you up, that's gonna hurt. And when it exhales, it breathes out ice, so... Do not let yourself be hit by that. So light its butt on fire, and it'll freak out. Watch out for debris from the ceiling. And of course, don't get in its path, because it is ramming the walls, because it's freaking out. I mean, most things do freak out when they're on fire. Doyle on here? Yeah, he, he, he very much freaks out when he's on fire. Alright, so second... Oh! First, same as the first, except this time I'm going to be devoured. And he just sort of ski shots you into the fucking wall, which is pretty cool. I mean, terrible. I, I hate that that happens. Oh, and do not let yourself get cornered like this. Also, stay away from him at all times. Oh! I was about to say, don't let your, uh, basically you should, uh, just keep him barely on screen so that he doesn't suck you up, but even when he's not on screen, he'll suck you up, so. Okay, I know I said I'm bad at this fight, but this is really bad. Seriously past me, what made you think that this was a good run? Why did you go with this? This is a terrible run, you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, now I'm far enough. So I think we need one more rock, and he should go back to his ice phase. Now, I think that first phase is actually how you damage him, and this is just his transition phase. Or maybe this is actually how you're... Excuse me? Or maybe this is actually how you're hurting him, and... Uh, the other one, this one, is the transition phase. I think it just takes three rounds, so this might be the end of it. Of course, it won't be the end of it if I keep botching it like this. Botching it a lot. Holy jeez. Okay, this is not a good round, and now he's going to try to eat me. Or maybe not. Oh, wait, no, this definitely isn't the last round, because, uh, we haven't encountered... Oh, wait... I guess this might be the last round, because this is the gimmick I was just about to mention. Yeah, he makes the area dark, so now it's harder to see. Which, you know, despite the fact that he is gigantic, can be problematic. Oh, and look at that, he's running around frantically. But... He doesn't actually make the uh, area stay like that. Eventually, that ink does run out, and the area is not dark anymore. So we can proceed with the battle as normal. And no, you don't have to burn his butt here. And I'm pretty sure this is actually the last phase since he's using ink now, and jeez, that's annoying. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you can't burn his butts. I mean, maybe you can try, but you might as well just keep hitting rocks back at him. Of course, it would be better if I was in a better position, but I'm pretty frequently not. It looks like you have a lot of space here, but... Not quite as much as you really need, to be honest, and please stop doing that. Okay, maybe I should burn his butt, just for good measure. Yeah, I didn't like that, did you? Huh? You don't, you don't like that here and, uh, that your butt burning, do ya? Yeah, you're freaking out and exploding. Well, he's dead, and thank goodness for that. And with that, we can be done with a Temple of Droplets. Thank God, I got tired of this place 34 minutes ago, and I just want to leave. So here's the element of water, we're going to get our heart container in a moment, and then we're going to leave this place forever, and we're never going to come back. 
Water quenches thirst, ends droughts, and nourishes life, and also it's the basis for a terrible dungeon. Ah well, next time on Minish Cap, I reckon we'll be using this lantern to uh, find some more extra stuff. So see you then. Oh, um, now see you then.